much. Thank you, everyone. A uh, little less people than the previous one, but that's better. Uh, so I came to talk to you about uh, the link between basically APIs, which for uh, business people is a very, very abstract object, meaning uh, if I'm a C-level, API is a free letter acronym. I don't understand what it is. So I think it's very important, and that's what we're trying to do, to have them understand what you can do with APIs and what kind of business transformation you can expect from APIs. So the first thing that any business person should know is that API, if you look at the two schemes, is basically the new way of created, creating a company, focusing mostly on allocating resources to my main people, what I do best, either being sales or marketing or a product, and using APIs to create an infrastructure of business that is not mine. So if I take just a quick example, uh, we had a challenge a few weeks ago from a customer that needed a, a cookie pool and a tag very fast and didn't want for some reason to use Google Analytics. Uh, we went uh, on top of Azure with a couple of developers and in three weeks we have our own analytics. So that seems crazy, but if you look at it as a manager, that means that instead of hiring people, training people, acquiring a solution, managing the solution, I can, with APIs, basically run my company only focusing on what my core business or my core value is. And that's a big shift. Don't forget that all our uh, large corporations spend roughly 20 to 25% of, uh, of their resources on IT, IT management, IT tools, proprietary software, managing licenses. So in the end, using APIs to drive your business is a real competitive advantage, and it creates a new opportunity for almost everyone, which is basically uh, being at the same time a company and a data provider, or at least using the data you get from APIs to enhance your business. One very simple thing is that never forget that an API from a business standpoint is also a counter. It means that uh, although it's a technical object, as a business person, for the first time, I can know to the minute how many people did that, how many people used that, how many people bought that, how many people didn't buy what I, do, buy what I did, etc., etc. So you, we are entering a world of analytics, and this world also creates a huge amount of data, which is no, I wouldn't say uh, cheap, but very economic to treat if I compare with 10 years ago, which means that gives huge business transformation opportunities. What does that mean concretely? Because Mehdi asked me to be as uh, down to earth as possible. Uh, it means that some companies can really, really be impressive. I don't know if any of you know Tropo. Uh, it's a small uh, startup, and it's basically an alternative telco. They created a telco in the cloud, a telecommunication company, which means that if I tomorrow want to set up, let's say, a two people or three people customer care center, because I begin, I'm a startup, I begin to have a few uh, tens of customers, and some of them are calling, and I need to address that. What's very interesting with Tropo is that they provide you the equivalent of a telco in the box. Meaning, if I want to set up my call center, I won't have to go to a meeting with somebody from a business services from a telco. I won't have to set up and hire somebody to install the product and make it run on all my telephones and all my, uh, well, sorry, my mobiles, my cell phone, my tablets. I can go there with just one DevOps or one guy that knows code enough to uh, assemble something. And what Tropo proposes me is a, a solution whereas for a few, let's say, tens of K, I will have a fully functional uh, call center with queuing system. I can even have some uh, requeuing system to send directly some of the calls to some of my salespeople or to my CEO if it's an important call, etc. So all the services I could have expected from a traditional big telco company, I can get in the cloud through APIs from Toropo. And I can get more than that because on top of it, I will have an analytics of everybody who's calling my call center. I will very easily be able, for instance, to detect uh, what time is the sweet spot and, what, and then uh, manage my team in the call center accordingly to the real load schedules and not to some imaginative stuff. So Tropo is a nice example of a company that I can use to basically replace my traditional tech co. And the cost range is about one to 10. We estimated, for instance, for this one, that if I had to build a real code center with traditional technologies, I would spend $110,000 more. So if you're a big company, no big deal. If you're a small startup that just raised $500,000, you can imagine what an advantage that can be. 
it can apply to very, very IT business, but it can also self-apply to, uh, let's say, uh, unexpected businesses. I don't know if you know Pola. Pola is a Japanese company that is an expert, or was an expert, in cosmetics uh, in Japan. And what they did, they're a big company, roughly 2, million, 2 billion euros revenue, and although they were leading in Japan, they decided in 2013 uh, that they would use APIs to improve their business. And they did that by basically starting asking their customers to wear bracelets, to send forms, to fill out some information, to collect data sets about their customers. And from that, they created a huge value, which is described here, and it's really a formidable company. They grew 30% just based on data business the last year. And the, why do they do that? It's very simple. If you are a, a, a customer, uh, you basically have a lady data that you can send back by courier or by internet or by devices or inter internet of things and that sends all the information about your skin, humidity, uh, the way you uh, behave to some uh, cosmetics, etc. It all goes into a big data center and from this data center they do two things. First, they issue you very fast a personal report. Don't forget to always give back to your customers what they gave you in one form or another. So in that case, it's a personal report telling you this is your type of skin. You're either a normal or abnormal person skin-wise. Uh, you can use that kind of cosmetics. You should avoid this one, etc., etc. So that's my individual report about how am I regarding my cosmetics. And at the same time, they send directly to uh, their business all the instructions to manufacture your own cosmetic products. So it's what we call mass personalization. What's interesting in that case is that it's a company that was existing prior. It was a solid company. Actually, they were one of the leaders of the market. But to go further, to generate more growth and more spectacular products, they decided to use API technologies and consumer data to be the first cosmetic providers that can create cust fully customized products. So basically, they're using technology to shorten the cycle between R&D in cosmetics and the customers. If you take some leaders, I won't uh, give a name, but they are our customers, uh, worldwide leaders, between somebody that has an insight or an idea in the R&D lab and market, there's about two to three years, minimum, if it's not five. In this company, they use technology and APIs to basically shorten that cycle and be basically in weeks in between a diagnostic, a new idea, and your product. And they are getting tremendous growth from that. Another example, much closer to France, that you might have heard of, is AXA. AXA did something that's pretty bold for a banking establishment or a financial establishment. They opened their APIs to the public, to a controlled public, but to the public. What a bank does, basically, is IT. A bank, basically, is processing IT, and the real competitive advantage is that if you had to manage millions of transactions per day for millions of people, from a pure IT standpoint, it's a challenge. They've kind of thought, we're doing something not very smart here, we have all this know-how, we have all this infrastructure, and we only use it for ourselves. And by only using it for ourselves, based on our products and our brand, maybe we are missing opportunities. And they actually looked at a very uh, strong actor in the US, or at least a very noisy one, which is called Simple. I don't know if you heard of Simple, but Simple is a, basically a bank that is, in a sense, an application. Simple had the idea of doing a very, very, very simple retail front end for banking, where I could get through an application a, a, a check account, a checkbook, a credit card, budget, and that's it. And Simple was a huge success, over 150,000 customers in six months. So what that told the financial community is that through the simple logic of using your own processing capacity, your operating capacity, opening them to other people, maybe they can build business on top of it, maybe they can be successful, and that's more business for you. So what we're seeing with this AXA initiative, which did something that once again is a premier, a bank opening publicly an API to use their processing power, they're enabling probably some people with smart ideas, some people in this room, to say, I have a new idea for retail banking, accounts should be that way and not that way. 
do it, use the full power of a banking capability, and create a product very fast. And of course, I guess access game is that if some very, very cool application emerge, they will buy them or they will partner with them. But that's another way to see a very traditional business basically uses APIs and technology to transform itself by redefining the boundaries of what it does. And what it does now is processing, and maybe one day it will delegate retail completely to an uh, ecosystem that will be using its API. Last one, you know this one, I guess, pretty well. Uh, it's Uber. <coughs> it's becoming a classic in a few months, because I think it opened two months ago or three months ago in France for the Uber API. The idea there that I think is very interesting is that they make basically a depla displacement as a service. Meaning that yesterday, if I, which we all know the case, I have a small company, some of my customer is in a hurry, he says, I need to be there in 20 minutes, do you think that's possible? Well, we go down to the lobby, we ask the nice lady at the lobby if she can call a cab, she tries to call a cab, she doesn't get a cab, my customer is, ca is getting nervous, he's rushing out, it was a bad experience. What I can do now with Uber is very simple, I can... Uh, plug in their API, so it still will be on my infrastructure, it still will be my service. If I have an application, for instance, for uh, late nights, it still will be my application that's used, but I will call on Uber services and enhance my experience, my application, my business, with something very cool that is, well, there's a cab two minutes away, it will be there and you'll be there on time. So once again, this looks interesting, but as a company, if I'm a small startup, I probably grew my uh, bonus points as customer experience, even if I'm a French agency, from 10, 20, 100 points from a customer perspective, because I do have suddenly a transportation service that's efficient. And Uber is feeding me that back. The most interesting part is that they can guess no more and more where I'm going to go. And that's interesting between that means that maybe one day I'd be able to tell my customer, uh, well, we kind of guess that you'd be in a hurry in 20 minutes and we'll have to go to the other side of Paris. The taxi will be there in two minutes or actually your Uber will be there in two minutes. And Uber wins and as a business, I win by using them to enhance my experience. Uh, sorry, I've just been this one. <laughs> so those three cases are very simple, but they show you that APIs, if you don't look at them from a pure technology standpoint, but from a business standpoint, can basically do three things. Business development, because of course for Uber, that's more and more accounts, more and more customers, and more and more data to make better and better service. Product development, that's basically Polar, that's shortening its R&D to customer cycle just by using technology. And simple, that shows the way to banking institutions on how to de redeploy their business. But there's one thing uh, that is uh, a big question. He, how can a board, and I'm talking about a standard board, you know, with HR or, uh, you know, the, the COMEX, HR, marketing, sales, product, how can they understand this opportunity? Our job at Fabio Novel is to help them find it, but sometimes you're talking to people who have won wars, not doing that, or doing exactly the opposite as using uh, open uh, APIs. They basically won the war by using proprietary software, proprietary IT, putting walls behind their business. How do you get them to understand the opportunity? And we found a way, and that's uh, kind of new for API days, that's our new speech. We teach them to code. One thing that's really, really important to understand, I think, and I think most of the people here understand, using APIs is somehow coding. And if you don't understand what code can do, how to code, what are the opportunities of coding, there's no way as a business manager that you can really understand the API opportunity. So of course, although these are two good examples of people who are coding and were kind of successful, uh, one uh, 30 years ago and one recently, uh, you can tell everyone that coding isn't that hard anymore and that it's very important as a business skill to learn how to code. And everybody says it, so I'm not the only one. First, the President of the United States said that coding is getting more and more important. Uh, Harry Lewis uh, at Howard said the same thing. And the, one of the most famous entrepreneurs, Brandon, also went back to school and started coding just because that's how important he think it's to, to design the future. Don't worry, you'll get the slides uh, after. Uh, and it's not that hard anymore. 
Uh, first, uh, if you're interested and a business person, go to code.org. Code.org is a small uh, organization that grew over the years and that is now at delivered 32 billion and more hours of code lessons to anybody. Anybody can go and start coding and learn coding. And learning coding is not that hard anymore. Uh, first, one way of doing it, that's the way uh, some of people I know do it in a very, very big companies, they take their kids to go coding, and there are a lot of formats these days of scoot for kids to learn how to code. Because everybody that has a kid and wants him to have a competing advantage in the future probably wants him to know how to code a little bit, or at least to understand how code works. That's how important it is, and going with its kids, you might learn some interesting stuff. You also know have large institutions that are creating coding school. Uh, actually, uh, full disclosure, if some are in the room, we started doing some coding sensibility to Orange uh, Comex. So we have a lot now of boards of very large company that do days or a couple of days in coding school to learn how to code. And I'm talking about the HR guy, I'm talking about the finance manager, I'm talking about the marketing manager, just to get a feel of what it is. And there are institutions doing it in France, all over the world. This one we like a lot because we invested in it. It's called Simplon.co. Not only do they teach large organizations are to code. They also use code as an inclusion tool uh, for defavorized people. Don't forget that anybody can code. And sometimes you'd be amazed that this guy in New York, he just learned how to code before, for what we understood, he was selling drugs. He created an application to help people in his uh, region find a location and displace themselves, kind of a small Uber at his region's stuff. He sold, I think, 15,000 applications and now he's out of the drugs and into the application business. That's what code can do. And for instance, Simplon, which is a very good project that we support, is one way to go and start learning code. You can also try by yourself, and this is new coding interfaces. So I know that a lot of geeks love to show you pages and pages of small numbers saying, is, it that, is that good code? Uh, but today you can start coding very simply with those tools, uh, MIT Scratch, which is basically a visual interface to code, uh, Kodu, Game Salad, which is a small application development tool for games. So all those things you can go online and start coding, and you see it's not that hard because you don't have to think about uh, huge features, basically you're just doing Lego. Uh, some else, if you want to get more advanced, there's also a lot of MOOCs and institutions that have created ways of learning to code online. Uh, code Academy, Open Classroom, the Khan Academy. It's very hard not to find, if you look for learning code, a proposal that will fit you to learn how to code, at least at the basics. You can also learn to code in very, very uh, different ways. Basically, you can today code Internet of Things. My favorite is Lego Mindstorms. I don't know if everybody ever tried it. Well, it's Christmas. I encourage you to offer your kids uh, Lego Mindstorm and play with it. But if you play with Lego Mindstorms, you'll also realize that coding is not that hard anymore and Internet of Things is not that hard anymore. Today, everything is packaged, and when I say basically coding is more and more legal-like, so you have no excuse as a manager for not doing it, actually the best coding tool to really start is Lego Mindstorm. And it's a real business challenge because don't forget, for generations, programming, APIs or anything else was an IT thing. Uh, it was something that was uh, basically reserved to people that had made, uh, you know, C++ learning and experience, etc. What's happening as we speak is that coding is going back to, uh, in France we say métier, businesses. So you start to have coders uh, basically way closer to the business in marketing departments, in HR departments. Uh, for instance, I have a few customers that are hiring, hiring coders for their HR department to program LinkedIn because that gives them a competitive advantage. If you go to the IT department, no offense intended, they tell you, oh, uh, LinkedIn APIs, we'd rather buy a big system to do that and we'll get back to you in six months. If you have a coder at home and you say, I want to use the LinkedIn API to see what are the best keywords on LinkedIn to recruit. Uh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, and the best thing to recruit, basically, it will be done in hours. And if it's done in hours, you have a competitive edge and it's done. And don't forget that the biggest movement probably will be that because of what I'm telling you, if you start tomorrow learning to code and using APIs with code, basically customers will code. As a customer, you start coding. And if there's one thing you should do, 
is try that. This is a new business, it's called IFTTT. It seems very simple. It's a self-coding environment where I can say basically, if I receive an SMS from my daughter, please send it to my wife. If this, then that. It's very simple, it's the basic of coding, everybody can do it, and it was founded basically less than four years ago, it already has 14 million personal applications running that are used more than once a day, meaning customers, if you have customers, are starting to code themselves, and by using IFTT, you can try. And what's the reward? Well, if you're into communication, the reward is maybe you'll create or use the like or the next like of your business. And as a communication manager, this is invaluable. Maybe uh, if you're in marketing, you'll understand that by opening your processing power, you can gain more ecosystem, more businesses using you and more traction in marketing and be well known. If you're in sales, understanding coding and APIs, you can start selling on any marketplace and marketplace are really getting the dominant places to sell. So as a sales manager, if you know how to code a little bit, you can better interact with those marketplace. Amazon being the biggest. If you're in operation, just think about the cost you can save by having one guy by you that when you say, I need a new call center, can come back 15 days later and say, okay, I'm done. We have all the tools ready, all the phones are ready, and the application is ready for everyone, versus doing an RFQ, a request for proposal, to all the telcos about the business. That's the competitive edge, that's the reward, and all you have to do to get that reward is basically start coding a little bit. Same goes for HR, and I think I'm in the right timing. Uh, so that's the end of these keynotes. Thank you very much. We have time for two quick questions. Oh, I have the All light. Uh, I, I will make the first one. So, um, it's the, um, you are saying that um, maybe software and APIs are re-empowering maybe, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, customers to make product for themselves, to yes. customize, yeah? Uh, it's basically, it's getting out software from IT. Basically, uh, I, I lived in a world and I was, I was not innocent. I was at Lotus, IBM, Microsoft, Compaq, so I know this world. Uh, we were all in a world where uh, doing software was a proprietary thing. What's happening now, and I think it's very exciting, to be a little bit American, is that uh, basically first, the business people are rediscovering that software is leverage and competitive advantage. Uh, I have right now, uh, for instance, in France, Group Bayard, which is a big publishing group. They are all going to Simplon, all the managers, every week, to learn a little bit of code, and some of them started programming a web radio for kids, and they were marketing managers. It wasn't perfect, so they had to have a little help from a coder, but for the first time in years, a marketing department created a new product based on the asset of the company. And yes, I think the next step, it will come slowly, is that uh, consumers will want to program things. We are actually starting, if you buy your mother, uh, and senses uh, business, for instance, uh, at LAFNAC, you'll be coding some small things. If you buy a Nest, you'll be coding some small thing. It will be very simple, very Lego-like, you know, uh, if my wife enter the room, then do that. Uh, if my kids try to open the TV, then alert me with an SMS, etc., etc. But that's coding, so it really means that as a businessman, if you want to create something new and create traction, you have to think that way. And unfortunately for them, but I think fortunately because at the same time it's fun. I don't know any other way than learning to code a little bit to understand really the power it gives you. So uh, you made a, a great study uh, uh, last week, I think, Gafanomics. Yes. That showed that the four biggest company of the planet maybe uh, in the tech world focus on the customers more than on the products. Yeah, actually they're, they, they're, they're focused on providing the customer with an infrastructure that allows them to either use prepackaged stuff or to do their own uh, product. Uh, if you look at basically, uh, for instance, Facebook, Facebook is fully open as API and more and more, I can almost program my own Facebook. I can choose the things I will use, the things I will not use, etc. This is moving forward, so I think you'll see in those champions of consumer uh, experience, strangely enough, perhaps not Apple, but all the other ones, more and more ways as a customer to create my own experience from their product and their infrastructure. So I really think the new platform again and strategy must be around that. How do I allow my customer to program its own business on my platform 
and then I'll get my rewards. And this is why we will have Twitter tomorrow that that will show the fabric that goes exactly in this way to be the fifth uh, GAFA thing. So last quick question. Um, you, we often say that it's not the CEO that pay the bill <laughs> of the employees, it's the customer, right? Yeah, I mean... Uh, it's the customers that pay the bill of all the employees of the company. Yeah, I think, strangely enough, the first time I... Uh, no, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah my question was about the product. Does the product will be made by the customers? Is, the, is, is it the customer that make the product? It's, it's a mix. I think it's... Uh, if you're good at uh, electric guitars, uh, and a good electric guitar builder, uh, that stays a trade that, as a consumer, I cannot achieve. But the ability, for instance, and there's more and more, to go to a business online, tell him, OK, I'd like to you to prepare my guitar, but I'd like to have, do the final assembly myself. I, there's already three companies that do that. It seems very trivial, but yes, I think moving forward, it will be a mix of collaboration, actually, between very knowledgeable consumers that will be and have the know-how to modify their product or customize it, whatever you call it, and companies that will provide basically more of an infrastructure than a product. A question from the room and not from Mehdi, and I'm yep. done. <laughs> I heard uh, recently that Yelp, for example, when they're hiring uh, across the whole agency, so for example, their business development managers, the part of the application was that the business development managers had to build something with the Yelp API. So even if it was like, so even though they weren't expected to code in their jobs, they were expected to at least know their way around the API and build something of value. Are you seeing that sort of practice uh, being adopted amongst yeah, uh, well, f at my age and being an ex-coder, I'd love to because that would make me solvable again. Uh, but other than that, yes, more and more. Uh, what is said is that even if you're not a very good coder, uh, A, you have to understand the logic of coding because that's very important. So at a minimum, you'd be asked, I think, to do, and it's starting, yes, in some companies, you're asked to at least be able to do some IFTT. You know, uh, it's not very complicated, but at least it shows that you have the logical structure to understand code. And more and more, even in uh, non IT functions, you start to have people saying, OK, can you do that with software? Can you assemble those two things? Or would you personalize that? I think it's growing and it's going to grow even further. Although today, it's more a game where uh, marketing departments are hiring operational developers and putting them within the team. But I think moving forward, it will be a part of uh, any courses to have a little bit of coding. Thank you very much. I Thank think I'm done. Thank you, Cyril. Thank, Thank you, you very much.